Hey, it's Dr. Adam Nally coming to you live uh, this evening. It's Wednesday evening, uh, the night of, uh, I think, uh, the Democratic uh, um, debate. So I thought that I would interrupt your debate information about uh, the carbon footprint and how horrible red meat and processed meats are in regards to the, to the carbon footprint and see if I can dispel a few myths for you. Um, if you're new to my broadcast, I appreciate it. Uh, to put a one in the chat bar and let me know you see this. Uh, I'm broadcasting right now live on Facebook. This will roll over to YouTube. So it's there on YouTube for people to watch it later. Uh, tell me where you're from. Uh, I, I, there's a bit of a delay on my software as it rolls to uh, uh, to, to uh, the, the software that I run that, that actually that does this so I can see comments. But if you got a comment, pop it in there. I just was going to take a few minutes and talk a little bit about red meat. Um, you know, I, I I, I've, we've heard since the early 2000s about this carbon footprint issue and how red meat's going to kill us all and cause greenhouse gases to, to go up and all that sort of stuff. And so I thought I would dispel a few myths. Um, to be honest, uh, the, the carbon footprint issue is really comes from the World Health Organization uh, agenda item number 13, where they want to get rid of cattle uh, to improve the uh, greenhouse gases uh, and to actually shift us all to a plant-based diet. In fact, there's a whole uh, Managing Diabetes website that are all plant-based docs that are pushing this issue. And so it's important for you to understand. And I'm sure I'm going to offend some um, liberals or some Democrats out there that follow me in regards to this, this concern. But the issue is, um, you know, if you eat more red meat, more processed meat, are you going to get cancer? Are you going to die? Is, is it going to increase your carbon footprint? Is it going to make us all worse? Um, and uh, the answer is that no, in a short run. Uh, let me tell you who I am. My name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board certified family physician and a board certified obesity medicine specialist. I've been in practice about 20 years. I've been doing ketogenic diets, low carbohydrate, uh, almost carnivore for the last 15 years. Um, carnivore part uh, on and off where I do more specifically just meats. Uh, and I, I, I wax and wane between that a little bit. Um, but uh, but I, I support all, all those approaches. We do some intermittent fasting as well. Uh, and so many of you know me, some of you may or may not. But I thought today I would talk a little bit about um, some answers to some questions that I've had actually a few people ask me uh, over the uh, social media sites that I'm on. If you've not seen my sites, go to docmuscles.com. Uh, I've got a blog there. Um, that's where I've got a lot of information there about low-carb diets, things of that nature. I wrote a book called The Keto Cure. If you haven't checked it out, go to Amazon and, and type in The Keto Cure. Keto Cure being one word. I wrote that uh, about a year and a half ago. Great book talking about the 16 diseases that low-carbohydrate diets treat uh, and how to treat them with that. And then lastly, um, uh, go to you can find this on YouTube. Uh, at forward slash Dr. Nally, Dr. Nally, and I've got a whole bunch of videos there to help you in your in your ketogenic carnivore journey. Um, yes, they should listen to Peter Ballerstead, Candace. <laughs> Peter Ballerstead's a great guy. He he understands the ruminant question very well. Um, but I thought I would address just a couple simple things in regards to the number one. Um, you know, one of the big issues that th these guys are purporting and promoting all the time is, oh, you know, if you eat this red meat or if you eat processed meat, it's going to give you cancer. Uh, that terrible c word. Uh, it, the issue is this, when you eat processed meats or you eat red meat and you and you cook it on a grill, the worry is is that of nitrite or nitrates. Now nitrite is a, is is what actually makes plants green. It's the it's 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 the nitrogen that's there and it causes the green color to show up in those plants. The concern is that if you eat these red meats, it's going to increase your nitrate amount. Well, the actual the concern is that nitrate actually con converts to nitrite in the gut, about 5% of it will convert. And, and the concern is if your nit uh, nitrite level goes up, you're, it can increase your risk for, for colon and gut cancers. Uh, the answer is if it's really, really high, absolutely it can. But only about 5% of that's converted to, nitri uh, to nitrite. And so um, your, the urea cycle in your body, if it's functioning normally, does very, very well and clears that right out of the system. So there's no work worry. The risk of you getting cancer from eating processed meats or red meats is about 0.5%. 0.4%. Uh, you're more likely to get struck by lightning in your lifetime than you are to die of colon cancer from nitrite in red meat. Uh, take that to the bank and, and, and deposit it. Uh, that's the big issue. And so, I, and in fact, there are more nitrates in a leafy green salad than there are in 278 hot dogs. So my concern is why are we worried about this red meat processed meat issue? It really is, it's, it's a moot point. Um, it's really not something that's concerning. Um, to be frank, if you have spinach, lettuce, cabbage, bok choy, carrots, there's two to five times the nitrite nitrates in them than there is in bacon or even hot dogs themselves. And if you have a leafy green salad, you actually are having more nitrate than you would if you had a huge amount of hot dogs or a huge amount of processed meat. And that's the worst processed meats there are. Um, you know, my suggestion is 
uh, if you want to have processed meats, have them. Um, there's nothing wrong with deli meats or processed meats, as long as they're real meat. It's, it's not soy and, and a whole bunch of uh, artificial uh, uh, meats. That's that's the big key. So, so be aware of that. Um, second issue that I wanted to just touch base with is that what causes the cancer risk when they look at the studies is not the, the meat itself, but it's the presence of fructose. Now, if you're eating sugar, which is a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule, the fructose itself um, it actually suppresses your ability to handle the nitrogen produced from the red meat because of the rise in uh, uric acid, the decreased nitric oxide, the decreased presence of what's called nitric oxide, oxide synthase, which actually helps you to clear that nitrate. Um, so if you're eating fruit, fruit juice, or large amounts of sugar with your meat, if that meat is cured in sugar, that's where the, the, the cancer risk starts to go up. Um, and so if you're doing a true ketogenic diet, you're not actually eating, um, you're not eating the large amount of sugar. You're not eating a large amount of fructose. You're actually just fine. So that, that worry is, is totally clear. Nothing to be, to be concerned about. Um, so, so those are the two points I wanted to make just a short video tonight, uh, just to help you increase your carbon footprint, um, and help you realize that it's not, it, it's actually a, a, a false or a moot point that is being purported to try to get people elected. Um, uh, so if you, uh, want to look into more of it, check out my blog. I did a whole, I did a whole blog post on this. If you go to docmuscles.com uh, forward slash blog and type in nitrates, it gives you some of the, the resources and, and the, the sites to that. So you can find that. Well, there's somebody from Tasmania that signed in. Um, that's awesome. So let me take a couple questions from you. I realize um, that this is a fun night and you're, it's Wednesday. Hopefully uh, you're enjoying your Wednesday. Sheena says, haven't, haven't read your book yet. Um, but love the wisdom on the morning jog. Oh, thank you for that, Sheen. I appreciate that. Hopefully you got a little wisdom and you're not worried about eating your hot dogs as long as they're all beef hot dogs um, or your, your processed meats. Go to the deli, get the good stuff. It's, it's worth it. Um, hello from Langley, says Michael. Uh, let's see here. Karen says, I love your book. Thank you, Karen. I love my book too. Uh, it actually is helpful. Let's see. And then... See, Lori D says intermittent fasting is incredible. Yes, it actually is. And ketogenic diet stimulates intermittent fasting naturally. Um, Peter Ballerstead is a great guy. Um, he actually is one of the speakers that I've been, had a chance to speak with on a number of conferences. And he does a wonderful job in talking about um, this whole carbon footprint issue and how it's just a stupid thing. Uh, that it really is. It's, it's, it's very poor science is what it is. Um, and let's see. Uh, look and see. If you got any questions, pop them in there. I'm um, just looking back to see if there's anybody who's got a question uh, in there. I'll give you this is a little bit of delay. So this is where the sugar forms the plaque. Well, Sheena, what actually happens is that the when you have a higher amount of insulin, the higher, and I talked about this in my um, cholesterol video. So go check out the uh, Should You Worry About Your Cholesterol video that I have on YouTube. Um, what happens is as insulin goes up, the insulin actually makes it more difficult for you to oxidize or esterify uh, the cholesterol molecule as it's pulled back into the LDL cholesterol. So if it's non-esterified or if it's not oxidized, that cholesterol binds to the outside of the molecule rather than being pulled inside. And when it's bound to the outside, the molecule becomes becomes dense and small and heavy and actually increases the risk of, of forming the plaque in the artery. So it's the higher insulin in response to the sugars, and the, which is glucose and fructose. Uh, glucose immediately, fructose three to five hours later after it gets processed by the liver, because all of the fructose is processed in the liver first. And that's what inhibits the urea, urea cycle, causing the nitrates to become an issue. So um, if you're having meat and fat, there's no problem with the urea cycle. It's working just fine. And you're not going to increase your risk for, for blockage or things of that nature. So it's important to understand. All right. Some great questions are popping on here. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Doc says, uh, what about calcium? Uh, how do we know you forget enough? You know, usually, uh, if you're eating, if you're, if you're calcium is a salt. So if you're using like the pink salts, like, uh, the Redmond salt, you're getting calcium that way. You're usually getting some calcium, um, in, in some of the food preparation. I'm usually not worried about calcium at all. I usually don't find that's an issue. Um, if you're eating cheese as a small part of your ketogenic diet, not a large amount of cheese, but a cheese, you'll get, a cal you'll get calcium that way. I'm really not worried about it. I, I rarely see a calcium issue. Um, Karen says she got her autograph book today. Oh, wonderful, Karen. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, how much should you increase electrolytes in hot weather? You know, I drink in hot weather, I probably take in between three to five teaspoons of salt. And I'm using that, the, the, the Redmond salt. Um, you know, for the average person, I tell them one to two teaspoons easily. In Arizona, at least three to five during the summertime, especially if you're exercising. So that's important to understand. 
Um, and those salts provide all the electrolytes you need. You don't, um, you don't need anything fancy that way. Good evening, Denise. How are you? Let's see. Somebody had a good question. Will, will ascorbic acid raise the blood sugar? Um, ascorbic acid, th there is. I've seen some um, supplements that contain ascorbic acid that actually does slightly raise it, but it's not been huge, and so I haven't seen it. If it's raising it, it may be something else in, that's in it, Tamara, so be aware of that. If a type 2 diabetic were to try 100% carnivore, would the amount of protein be an issue with keeping the blood sugar control? Usually, Faith, not at all. Uh, the 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 if a type two diet, I have a lot of type two diabetics that are doing uh, very ketogenic diets, which is less than twenty grams of carbohydrate, or near carnivore in some cases with some of my patients who are type two, and they and the protein does not. It actually allows them to dramatically control their blood sugar every time. That's the only way I can actually get a lot of my type two diabetics under control is to put them on a, a, a ketogenic uh, or even shifting to carnivore type diet. The amount of sugar used to cure bacon at risk. Um, usually, if, if you're using sugar, it depends on how much they're using. So not all bacons are created equal, so be aware of that. Um, if, there's a, if there's a sugar cure, there may be a small amount left. Just look to see how much sugar is left uh, in that bacon. Um, that's usually, hopefully, that, that, that clarifies it for you. Uh, one, If one meal a day, can you be tofu if eating high carb? Um, yes, you actually can. Um, because of the, well, see, this is the interesting thing I see. I see a lot of people come to me and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not doing your keto thing, but I'm healthy. I'm, I look great. I'm in great shape. But when I, I check their cholesterol, it's high. I check their inflamm inflammation markers, they're high. You know, you can, you can be healthy, have great muscle mass. I've got some bodybuilders that have come to me and said, you know, I'm in great shape. But when we check their metabolic profiles, because their insulin levels are still slightly high, their cholesterol is high. They're still, um, uh, you know, thin on the inside, thin on the outside, but but essentially fat on the inside or metabolically damaged on the inside. So something to be aware of. What about keto and gout? I wrote a whole chapter on gout and why keto fixes it. And is the only way, I, keto is the only way I've been able to prevent gout with many of my patients. So uh, I, 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 all of my patients that follow a low carb ketogenic diet have had not had a single gout incident unless they are cheating. And that's when they, they then they all admit to it if they flare up because they cheated. Um, evening doc. Hello, Paula Jean. How are you? Uh, Paula Jean says, enjoying the session. Love the book. Oh, thank you. Uh, you finally caught it live, Paul. How are you, Paul? Good to see you. Uh, hello, Becky from Queen Creek. Um, Costco low sodium brand has no sugar. Uh, yeah, the, I, um, Costco is pretty good. I've seen their bacon. They're pretty good. Uh, let's see. Will you gain weight from going carnivore to keto? No, you usually you won't gain weight, Becky, unless you're really, you know, to, to shift from from carnivore to keto, I don't usually see weight gain. Uh, the only the reason I see people are successful with um, carnivore is because some people's gut bacteria do process those veggies more significantly, and shifting to a carnivore status actually really helps them. I have some patients though that need a small amount of that leafy green uh, to control estrogen dominance, and so those are the patients so that I, that I recommend more. Uh, of a, of, a, of a very, very low carb ketogenic approach where others, carnivore is okay. It seems to be working very well with them. Um, so there's, there's some argument for on behalf. I, I use both and I, I we look at people's metabolic profiles to help them understand that. And I, I, I determine that through their blood work. There's really no way to know it um, uh, otherwise uh, significantly. What makes, uh, what, what markers in, indicate inflammation? I see a high insulin load. I see a high CRP. I see a, an elevated small dense cellular particle. Uh, they complain of joint soreness. Uh, and I'll see elevated uh, LPA and we'll see a shift in their uh, home IR, which is related to the insulin anyway. But that's, uh, those are the markers that I usually see. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any others. Oh, uh, interleukin-6 goes up. Tumor necrosis factor alpha will be elevated. Those are all factors that can be elevated there as well uh, in, in, in regards to the uh, markers. Are you supposed to fast before getting a lipid panel? Um, usually the fast before the lipid panel allows for a normalization of triglyceride. That's why you fast. But you don't have to. As long, and as long as they know you're not fasting, then they can account for where your triglycerides may be. But if you're eating keto, your triglycerides can be normal anyway. So... That's really the only because what drives the triglyceride is the insulin, and what drives the insulin is the sugar or the starch or the carbohydrate. So anyway, for what it's worth, been doing carnivore but missed my salad badly. So they're going back to keto. You know, I, I'll do like I'll do a day or two where I have no. I'll, well, I'll be carnivore, and then I'll have a salad one day, and then I'll, I kind of shift back and forth. And I just basically I, I listen to my body. I, my body. My wife loves to have a salad every day, so she has a salad every day. Not a, not a big deal. Um, Lisa, I love these lives too. They're fun to do. Hopefully, thanks for joining and thanks for your comments. Uh, what does it cost to have a visit? 
with you. I'm in Canada, so if I travel to Arizona, can I get an appointment? Actually, yes, you can. Um, just call my office. Uh, the number's there. Uh, call and set an appointment. I have a lot of people that come in from out of state uh, and out of the country. I have a few come in from out of the country and see me in my office. So uh, uh, the, the cost is based on what we do. If you go to my website, darkmuscles.com, there's a couple of options uh, in regards to VIP or uh, uh, direct primary care options, or you can just pay for an office visit one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out. Um, let's see. Vitamin D. Never had a problem with vitamin D levels before. Suddenly have an issue. Crazy low levels on metformin currently keto. Do vitamin D levels get low? Well, that you're, I would say, I would, I, I'm suspicious. If your vitamin D levels are low and you're eating keto, what I would want to know is what kind of fats are you eating? Because because your vitamin D is going to come from real animal fat. And, and usually the only time I see a lot of vitamin D level drop out to abnormal is that the person's using like MCT oil. They're not using real animal fat. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, catching my first live, love the videos, watching from Mississippi. Oh, Sally, thank you for joining in. Um, I'm actually going to be speaking in Mississippi in October. Um, they've asked me to come talk to the public health folks there. So I will be in Mississippi speaking in October. I'm excited to be out there. Um, I'll be, I think I'm going to be in Jackson is where I'll be. Um, let's see. I missed a question here. Let's see. A red deer. I got all the Canadian folks today. That's awesome. All you guys from Canada are signing. I got somebody from Tasmania watching as well. That's awesome. Uh, Crystal says she has a low vitamin D also. You know, the, the, the issue is ensuring that you're getting enough real animal fat. So bacon fat, tallow, uh, beef, you know, beef tallow. Um, those are all butter. Those are all real animal fats. And if they're real, if they're coming from real sources and uh, you should get the vitamin D from that. If you're not, if not, then I would say for sure, you know, there's, it's okay to supplement vitamin D. There's nothing wrong with that. We have patients that we do that with. So great questions, you guys. Thank you for asking all these good questions. And hopefully I uh, answered any question you have about processed meats and red meats. If you're just signing on, watch the video. Hey, again, my name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board certified family physician. Uh, I've been in practice about 20 years to tell you a little bit about it. If you're just signing on, <coughs> excuse me, check out uh, my YouTube videos. If you're watching this on a replay, you're probably watching this on, on the YouTube video, but if not, go to youtube.com forward slash DR Nally. That's where my YouTube's located at. Check out my website, docmuscles.com. Uh, there's a blog there and a uh, if you haven't got a copy of my book, go buy my book. Uh, it's available on Amazon. It's The Keto Cure. I uh, wrote it with Jimmy Moore and Maria Emmerich gave it, wonderfully gave us 60 recipes to put in that book as well. So it's kind of a, a trio of us together. It's a great, great, uh, great addition to your library if you don't have it. You guys have a great evening. Um, I'm going to go watch my animals. Uh, if you are so inclined to go watch the debate, tell me what happens. Um, I know they're going to talk about uh, carbon footprints and, and uh, carbon... Uh, uh, greenhouse gases, but uh, I had my brisket just to celebrate. So you guys enjoy it and um, enjoy the carnivore. If, if you're, if you're going to be at KetoCon, I'll be there tomorrow. Um, I'll check, uh, come and see me, shake my hand and introduce yourself. I'd love to see you. I'd love to, to, to meet you. I love to meet the folks that are watching these. Uh, Faith said might not be eating enough animal fat. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, so if you're dependent on MCT faith, your vitamin D level is going to be low. So you, you got to get, get rid of the MCT, use real animal fat, use real food. Um, I can't uh, promote real food enough. Uh, the, unfortunately, the bulletproof folks have had such a sway on the ketogenic community and getting them all to shift over to using these, these isolated uh, fats. And you're, you're eliminating a lot of the, the true nutrients, especially those fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D. So, um, I, I'd say get rid of the MCT and just use real, just use real fat. Um, so, so be, be aware of that. Um, all right, let's see. Kathy says she loves meat. Uh, you, oh, you're on coastal time, Linda. So have a good night, sleep well. Uh, you guys have a good night. I'm gonna go uh, finish up the chores with my wife to, to take care of the animals. I just want to sign in shortly and, uh, and give you uh, my two cents on uh, the uh, carbon footprint. Enjoy it, have a great time. We'll see you at, at KetoCon if you're there. Have a great evening. Remember, uh, keep the fat high, keep the carbs low and keep us terrifying. And we explained what that means. So watch the video if you just signed up. Take care, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.